Okay, we are at 1600 at this point, and this is game 11. <clears throat> and the game should gradually start getting getting harder here. So we got an 1800, and this time I'm going to go with an old Indian. Mm, I thought I had the fork there. I'm like, uh. See, so you see, the guys start playing faster. They start playing better. Got the bishop pair. That's something. Now we've got a uh, check Benoni type structure. And we're just going to turn it into a fun place where we can attack. Getting rid of our bad bishop with bishop g5. Wise. Okay. So let's in between move stuff. Now f five's a threat again. I don't know if you want to do that. Huh. E5, pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. Let's do it. Seems like a good position. Bishop d4 is a threat. Rook takes b2 is a threat. That's a threat too. And he missed that one. Pins. Okay. Not calculating much here, just kind of make this work. Now I at least have queen e8 if he has stuff. Hard to defend that. Okay. Went with a structural orientation this time. This was our highest rated opponent we faced yet at 1800. And, oh, I was about to say the bouncing bar of fate. What the, there's no way it's plus five. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is gonna like white for a while here. Okay, yeah, we're turning off the bar because when it's saying plus five and then it gets down to a proper evaluation, 
Um, honestly, in these structures, like uh, what you want to do for for white, like one, don't be playing e3. This this is just passive garbage. Um, knight bd7 e4, and you get yourself a position that resembles the structure from the classical king's Indian. And then, no matter what black does, you can just chill. Like, bishop e3, and then see, see what the score is in the position. This is so much better of a structure to meet any of the ideas. Because if c6, okay, bishop e3, a6, I can even consider, you know, play, playing against this type of idea with a6. But you, you just don't have really any any issues um, e3 is gonna give me an equal position which is what I'm looking for with black and then e4 just wasted tempo and the bishops misplaced then d5 and you gave me the c5 square which in in turn allows me to change the pawn structure favorably now when the pawn structure is completely locked like this you play on the wings so the natural breaks in the position are f5 and b5 so I immediately play a move which says, I'm thinking about b5, thinking about b5, so he's got to play against that. Now I'm starting to prepare f5, because I need to get my knight out of the way, and the g6 pawn is going to be needed for f5. So now I'm stopping his f4 break, and I'm willing to trade bishops. I would love to play bishop g5, because my, my bishop sucks. Um, so queen d2 stops that. Only square for the knight, that's good. That fixes the pawn structure with this Benoni flavor. And here he should probably do e5 and mix it up. <clears throat> but he allows me to just get to this ideal position to attack the isolated pawn. And I've already got the idea of bishop d4 in mind, but he'll have bishop e3 to stop it. So I'm going to just kind of smoke in mirrors here. Rook b1, queen b6, adding pressure to the b pawn. And now... He hangs the e4 pawn. Now there's no more bishop e3 because the rook's assisting. I get the exchange. He defends the knight in a way which allows me to keep attacking. So right here I had about a minute left. And it's one of those points that it's like, okay, he is threatening nasty stuff. So if I can't find mate, what you want to do in these situations, as soon as I got here... All of my pieces are defended, and I have in the least the idea of knight e8 or queen e8 to stop attacks if he checks on the back rank. So the other idea is handling bishop e5, but it, you know it's it's still not much to worry about if you see the continuation from here. I see the fact that his king is going to be able to go to g5. So all I do is cut off the key square. So I know at this point if he plays bishop e5, I have queen e1 check. He's got to block with the bishop, because that's the only reasonable move. Otherwise, he blocks with the queen, I take, then he blocks with the bishop. And with the rook on d3, I have mate. If the rook wasn't on d3, I would still have check, and then I would be able to come back to say... Um, actually, I would have g5, and then he would have to give up his queen. So h6 is just, you know, even if my rook wasn't on d3, this just kind of handled everything in the position. So, another one. <laughs>